Hey guys, Wes here. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about how you can use a combination of Tmux and Vim to set up a really nice, fluid, um, integrated development environment for working on web applications. Um, so, um, in effect, today we'll take a look at um, my setup and how it works with a Django app. So, if you're not familiar with Tmux, it is a terminal multiplexer. Uh, which basically means that it, allow, it allows you to switch between several different programs you might be running um, in a single terminal instance. Um, that, that's what it does uh, from a very basic standpoint, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Um, it also allows you to do things like create sessions. So I can create a Tmux session on a remote server, for instance, and then kick off uh, you know, some task that might take some time, and then detach from that session and then you know, shut down my local machine and then come back and reattach to the same Tmux session again at a later time on a completely different machine um, or from a different location. And that Tmux uh, session that's running remotely will just have um, been running the whole time you know, in the background. So um, it's a really useful tool for working remotely and for doing things like pair programming, but it's also extremely useful for um, just its basic use of multiplexing uh, single terminal. So um, for, uh, to, to start a new session, basically what I'm going to do is just tmux new dash s and we'll call this uh, whatever, just our Django project. All right, and you can see that basically tmux has started and we have what looks like, um, what looks more or less like just a basic terminal. Uh, with one um, minor difference here at the bottom, we have a sort of status bar, uh, which gives us the name of our current session, as well as an index um, of the current window that we have open. Um, so I can create um, separate windows or separate tabs, if you will, um, in Tmux. And so to begin interacting with Tmux, by default, you're going to use Control B and then some other set of keys. So Control B C will allow us to create um, another tab, so or another window. Um, so basically, you can see that we've got the original, and then at the one index we have a new window, and we can even name these with Control B comma. And so we might call this uh, I don't know, call this our SQL window, and then uh, Control B P will go back to the previous window, and then we can Control B comma, and we'll name this one uh, Vim or something. All right, so I've got two windows now with nothing in them. Um, and so uh, we're in our, our Vim window here. Let's go ahead and actually uh, create some split panes. So to do that, to create a vertical split, we're going to control B percent sign. And you can see now that I have two separate terminal instances open in a single window. All right, so on the left here, um, first of all, to get back and forth between um, panes, I've actually got some custom bindings that we'll talk about here in a little bit, but by default, you're going to use Control-B, O, um, and that will basically move your cursor between the different uh, panes that you have open. All right, so over here on the left side, what I'll do is just kick off an instance of Vim. Next, I'm going to just seed into our um, project directory and uh, fire up Vim. And then on the right side here, um, let's go ahead and actually split this pane uh, vertically so that we'll have two on the right side here. So that'll be Control B quotes, uh, double quotes. All right, so um, still I can move the cursor now, cycle between each of these three windows uh, using Control B O or the, or the uh, custom key bindings uh, that I have set up, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, so already this is pretty cool because what I can do is just uh, cd into the current project and um, then basically like run the development server. And then um, down here, um, maybe I could um, fire up uh, our task runner. So this particular Django project is using a task queue um, named Celery. So I can start that up. 
And then over here is where I'll be doing um, the actual editing code. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, you, you can see things like really immediately with this setup. So if I'm uh, writing some bugs over here and I mess something up, um, then of course I can see the error immediately here in my server window. Um, it's giving me an import error because I just tried to import something that doesn't exist. So, All right, so we can clean that up. And then as soon as that's fixed, we can see that the server again is happy and that we should be able to uh, continue visiting our, our website at the development server. All right, so um, I actually like to space uh, these windows out a little bit, the panes out a little bit differently. So to resize, um, we do control B and then use the arrow keys to move them. So that's control B, control arrows. Um, so I just kind of uh, clean that up a little bit. And that looks good. All right, so let's go to our the other window that we created um, called our SQL window. And we can control B N to get um, to that particular pane. If I create a bunch of these windows, I can also control B and then the number to get to the particular um, window that I want open. So um, yeah, so, that, so that's good. Um, to, to close out of these windows, I can actually just um, like control D and and kill the process of the running. So, um, all right. So here's our SQL window, and so maybe I'll have uh, a split here, and then um, on the bottom maybe I'll have the interactive uh, Python command line open, and uh, at the top maybe I will just connect to our dev database. So for example, so that's working. Um, so it looks pretty good. Um, we can go back to our first pane here, first window here. And yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the gist of, of the setup. Um, it's, it's a really sort of like rapid type of development environment, I think. Um, so uh, basically, like I said, I, you can just be doing all your work over here and um, sort of see the server response here. Um, you can monitor your tasks that are going out in the different queues that you have set up with Celery. I can very easily um, run queries against the database that I'm working with or just test out some code very quickly um, for sanity check and that sort of thing um, in the uh, interactive mode in Python. The other thing that this is really useful for is for doing things like testing. So let's see what that might look like here for a second. Um, so let's go ahead and split this with control B percent into two windows. And what I'll do when I'm running tests and writing uh, automation testing and unit testing, um, what I'll do is basically start up Vim on one side and we'll get to the uh, test file. And then on the right side here is where I'll actually run the tests and monitor the outputs. So um, all right, so we'll delete a database that was already in existence. Um, I think I was actually running tests in a separate session. So um, hopefully we can just delete that temp database. All right, and you can see that it is now running the test. So you couldn't see the browser opened up in my other screen here. Yeah, it'll probably still open up on my other screen, unfortunately. I'll try to drag it over when it opens. Right, so it'll open up, close, you know, run its test, close the browser. We just have a very simple uh, sort of smoke test over here on the left. Um, but this is a really nice setup, I think, because I can write the test, watch them fail, fix the code, uh, write the new test. Um, Etc. So, yeah, really nice setup. And then just very quickly, I can get back to the um, the uh, window that I was um, editing code in to begin with. Um, so it's really nice. Um, I really don't have to reach for the mouse very often, other than maybe to um, click around in the browser. Um, but as far as editing code goes, this is a really nice uh, 
uh, setup, I think. It works really well. Um, working from the command line is, um, is a lot of fun. Um, and you can work really quickly, I think. So um, very quickly, I'm going to talk about uh, some customization that you can do to make life uh, working with these two tools a little bit more sane. Um, so what I'll do is go ahead and close out of each of these uh, windows here. All right, so now we're just back in the terminal. Um, Tmux comes with a uh, with the ability to uh, basically configure it like a lot of um, a lot of uh, terminal-based applications. It's got a dot file, so we can look at that. We can look at the one that I have set up now for Tmux. I believe it's tmux.config or .com. And I've got some really basic setup here. Um, you can do you can kind of like manage the colors a little bit um, but the most important thing I found that works um, for me as far as as navigating really easily is uh, doing these custom key bindings basically uh, importing uh, vim motion commands um, with tmux so rather than do control bo I can basically just uh, use control and then use the vim directional hjkl keys uh, to move around between panes. So I got this from um, a guy named Chris Tomey's uh, GitHub. Um, he's got a Vim plugin called Tmux Navigator. And so you dump, you dump these uh, key bindings in your Tmux config, and then you install the Vim plugin, which we can look at. Uh, here, um, just called Vim Tmux Navigator, that's really the only Tmux specific plugin that I use. Um, there's not much else that I do uh, with regards to my Vim, uh, VimRC really that uh, contributes to this particular aspect of my workflow. All right, so that's basically it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you know, what other types of tools that you might use um, with this setup. It's something that I've been using recently for all of my web application development, and I've found it to be pretty useful. So hopefully you do too. Thanks.